Hey there, welcome to the YouTube channel. I pray that this message encourages you and it helps you grow and become more like Jesus. And make sure you hit the subscribe button so you can continue to grow and learn more. Enjoy. In these few short verses, we find out that names in biblical times were very significant. They held great meaning. And the names that were given to Jesus were destined to be a part of our life as well. They play a role in our eternity, our destiny. So his purpose for being here on earth also impacts our lives, our identity, and our future. We are intertwined, so to say. We are woven together with Christ. He came for us. And I wanna dwell on the three names and one in particular, the first one shortly, uh, is the name Messiah. We read in the beginning that they called him Messiah. It's the Hebrew form, or the Hebrew form means someone who is anointed and chosen to lead, or to save, or to deliver. The Greek form of Messiah is where we get the word Christos, or Christ. So when they said the name Messiah, they were saying Christ. So Jesus Christ, means the Messiah. So Jesus is the next name he was, he was given. Now, most, most of the time, or all the time, we get to choose what the names of our children are gonna be, but for Mary and Joseph, they didn't get to choose. God chose it, and the angels communicated it for them. And the name that they gave their son, the name that God gave their son, was Jesus. Jesus is the Greek form for the Hebrew name Yeshua, which in English is Joshua. Any Joshua's in the room? Joshua's name means the Lord saves. So Jesus came to save us from what? The angel said to Joseph, give him the name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. Salvation from sin would not be on their radar as much as a Messiah, a ruler who would sit on the throne of David and deliver the people. That's what they were looking for, a deliverer from physical tyranny and oppression. The Jews were hoping that someone would set them free from the oppression of Rome and other peoples, but the angels did not deliver that kind of news. Instead, they delivered something worse than physical oppression. They delivered that Jesus would come to set us free from sin. The name of Jesus drives home a message that humanity must not ignore. Our, our sin is the greatest enemy against the human race. And a simple definition of sin is to rebel against God. Sin is to do something against God's will and teaching or to neglect to do something God has commanded us to do. The problem with sin is it separated us from God, from a perfect fellowship, from eternity with him, all the way back into the garden with Adam and Eve. So that was the consequence of sin. It's so powerful that without divine help from God, we are powerless against it. You see, sin enslaves and holds us captive and the more we enjoy it, the harder it is to let it go. On this holy night, the night Jesus was born, God began the gracious rescue mission to save us from this foe. Essentially, you ready for this? Jesus' birth is the beginning of the greatest rescue mission we've ever seen. His birth was to save you from the greatest foe, which is sin. Was he successful? Yes. This was the good news. The angels proclaimed the night Jesus was born. Hark, the herald angels sing. Glory to the newborn king. Peace on earth and mercy mild. God and sinners reconciled. Born that man no more may die. Born to raise the sons of earth. Born to give them second birth. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn king. That's why he came. Now surely God would stay enthroned on high in the heavens and send hosts of mighty angels to do the work for him, right? 
No. In this story, the angels were only messengers. They were not warriors. Jesus would be the hero of this story. God himself would have come to rescue us. Do you know any other religion or any other God that could claim that? That would leave the heavenlies to come down to earth and rescue you? But not only rescue you, but give his life up for you? That's the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. It's okay. Give him praise. Amen. Amen. Now, he didn't do that. Amen. He didn't do that. He didn't do that from the throne. He came to earth, which brings us to the third name we read in this scripture, Emmanuel, God with us. Let us dwell for a moment looking at scripture and reflecting on the name Emmanuel. John 1, 14 and verse 18 says, so the word became human or Jesus became human and made his home among us. God became human and came here to make his home among us. He was full of unfailing love and faithfulness or in another translation, grace and truth. And we have seen his glory, the glory of the father's one and only son. No one has ever seen God, but the unique one or Jesus who is himself God is near to the father's heart. He has revealed God to us. Now, Paul would say a similar thing in Colossians 1.15. Christ is the visible image of the invisible God. God is no longer invisible. In Christ, he is visible. That's why, personally, for my life, I look to Jesus to understand who God is. Hebrews 1.3, the sun radiates God's own glory and expresses the very character of God. Do you want to know the character of God, then get to know Jesus. Do you want to know the goodness and the kindness and the love and the truth and also the conviction and the, and the tough love of God? Then get to know Jesus. Do you want to know the faithfulness of God? Do you want to know his provision, his help in time of need, his impeccable timing? Get to know Jesus. Jesus is God incarnate, which means in the flesh. Emmanuel, here's a reflection I wrote. A glory and presence so mighty that the Old Testament says, no man shall see his face and live. And yet Mary would hold him, kiss his face and live. Emmanuel, the divine dwelling with the dust, from majesty to muck and mire, from a boundless universe as a footstool to the dwelling of a stable, from the company of angels in endless praise, kids are gonna need your help for this, to sheep and their baths. <laughs> Ready, kids, go ahead and do it. What's, what's the sound of a sheep? Yeah, thank you so much. You do that so much better than me. Think about that for a second. Jesus would hear the praises of angels and now he hears the sounds of animals. From the radiance of eternal glory to the manger in swaddling dirty rags. From invincible to pierceable. From holy and pure to the sin offering for us all. My friends, this is Emmanuel, God with us. He left that kind of life to come down on this earth because he loves you, because he wants to be with you. Sin must be our greatest enemy for God himself to come and save us from it. But that also means, must be the greatest love for God to come down and save us from it. May the reflection of the great preacher Charles Spurgeon also speak to your heart these are these words from a sermon from Christmas that he wrote over 100 years ago. The very essence and glory of the incarnation is that he was God who was veiled in human flesh. If it was any other being who thus came to us in human flesh, I see nothing very remarkable in it, nothing comforting, certainly. That an angel should become a man is a matter of no great consequence to me. That some other superior being should assume the nature of man brings no joy to my heart and opens no well of consolation to me. 
But God with us is an exquisite delight. God with us, all that God means, the deity, the infinite Jehovah with us. This, this is worthy of the burst of midnight song when angels startle the shepherds with their carols singing glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill to men. God with us is worthy of the foresight of seers and prophets, worthy of a new star in the heavens, worthy of the care which inspiration has manifested to preserve the record. He's referring to worthy of keeping record of scripture. This too was worthy of the martyr's death, the death of apostles and those who confessed Jesus, who counted not their lives so dear that they weren't not willing to die for him. This, my brethren, is worthy at this day of your most earnest endeavors to spread the glad tidings, worthy of a holy life to illustrate its blessed influences, and worthy of a joyful death to prove its consoling power. That's Emmanuel, God with us. So what a beautiful name. What a powerful message in his name. How was the reception? Was he received well, John 1, 10 through 11 says, he came into the very world he created, but the world didn't recognize him. He came to his own people, and even they rejected him. Emmanuel came for all, but not all would receive him. All people need him, but unfortunately, not all receive him. The Bible records that there was no room in the inn the night that Jesus was born, there was no customary procession and party thrown for Mary and her son. And the hostility of Herod, wanting Jesus dead, reverberates the type of reception Jesus would receive on earth. In other words, not everyone welcomed Jesus. Not everyone welcomed God in the flesh. Even though he was gonna do something so marvelous and great, that it would bring joy to the whole world. Not everyone thought it was very joyous. So who did receive? Who did believe? It would be those who would listen, seek him, and then believe. We need divine help, though, to believe and be saved. There was no reception or celebration planned by man, no parade from below, it's true. But it didn't stop heaven. Because the heavenly angels intervened with their own joyful proclamation of the newborn king. The shepherds were awakened by God to go seek, believe, and proclaim the great name of Jesus on earth. Think about that for a second. If the angels had not come, would the shepherds go and tell the world? See, God had to send divine help to wake us up in our spiritual slumber, to help open our eyes to see and then believe in him. But that's not all. For those afar, God provided something really bright in the sky, a star, which gleamed and provoked the wonder and intrigue of those who were always staring at them, the wise magi. Providentially, they would journey to find the child with the great name, the child who created the stars that drew them to himself. Think about that for a moment again. Those who love to study the stars, they were studying stars that this baby once made. God himself made these stars and he put that star in the night sky to draw the wise magi to them so they would come and believe and worship. Tradition says that as they left and went back to the east, they spread the gospel of Jesus to those places. See, we needed help. And those who did believe, you believe, I've believed, maybe tonight you have not yet believed, let me tell you something. There will be no greater gift you would ever receive than Jesus Christ. It's a gift that you will never regret and never forget. It's the gift of knowing that Jesus Christ has paid for your sin on the cross that you are now forgiven in God's eyes and now you inherit eternal life. That is peace on earth for the time being. That is the joy of the Lord. That is the joy that has come to this world. That is the love that you will never find anywhere else. 
This is the message of Christmas. So what happens if you believe? John 1 also talks about that as well. But to all who believed in him and accepted him, he gave the right to become children of God. They are reborn, not with a physical birth resulting from human passion or plan, but a birth that comes from God. And what John is saying there is, you must be reborn spiritually in order to inherit eternal life. Jesus came so that you could have eternal life. Now, to close, let me read to you the Apostle Paul's words that wraps everything I'm saying in just one paragraph. Colossians 1, 15 through 23, for God in all his fullness was pleased to live in Christ. There you have Jesus, Emmanuel, God in Christ. And through him, God reconciled. He fixed the broken relationship that we had. He restored everything to himself. He made peace with everything in heaven and on earth by means not of Christ's birth, but of his death on the cross. This includes you who were once far away from God. You were his enemies, separated from him by your evil thoughts and actions, yet now he has reconciled you to himself. He has brought you home through the death of Christ in his physical body. As a result, he has brought you into his own presence, into the presence of God, Emmanuel. And you are holy. If you believe in Jesus Christ, he sees you as holy and blameless as you stand before him without a single fault. But the key is, you must continue to believe this truth and stand firmly in it. Do you believe that? If you believe in that, you have the gift of the greatest name that this world has ever seen, the gift of salvation, the person of Jesus Christ who has given you life and life eternal. I was reflecting on this song, O Holy Night. We sang it tonight. And the words, long lay the world in sin and they were pining till he appeared and the soul felt its worth. You see, again, we need divine help to see the worth that we have, who we were originally created to be. What does this mean? Well, let me share from my heart what I believe this verse of this song means. When Jesus appeared, the hope for deliverance was born. Instead of despair, that we're always gonna have to be this way or live this way, my life always has to be this way, the hope of deliverance was born. When the light of the world appeared, who was also Jesus, sin's luster, sin's appeal and shine faded into darkness because the light of Christ is brighter and greater than any appeal that sin offers you. When Jesus appeared, the soul's longing and hope for eternity was found. Everyone wants to live forever. There's only one way to live forever. And it was found in Jesus Christ. When our creator appeared, the worth that we lost in the Garden of Eden was rediscovered. Because Christ came himself to save us and to restore us back to the new garden. Without Emmanuel, God with us, we could not see what we were truly created to be. The birth of Jesus, the Savior, who entered our world to save us, was grace, another chance to open our hearts to seek and believe in him. It was another chance. That's why we celebrate Christmas, because we got another chance, because he came when we weren't even looking for him. We weren't even looking for a savior from our sin. We were looking for a physical savior from tyranny of a king in a country. He came to save us from something worse. And people's hearts began to open and believe in Jesus for eternal life. Do you believe that tonight? Because he offers it still. In fact, until he comes back again, the time to believe in him and be saved from your sin is now. That's what Christmas is all about. I love gifts. 
I love dinners with the family. I love the Christmas carols. I even love the busyness sometimes and the hot coffee. I love all those things. But there's nothing greater. There's nothing greater than knowing Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus came to save you, and he came to be with you. And this is the greatest gift you could ever receive. Believe. Believe tonight. In fact, close your eyes right now. We're going to pray. I know you came here for a Christmas Eve traditional candlelight service, and we're about to do that. But we're not going through the motions and the formulaic tradition of church right now. There's nothing greater than you and having an encounter with Jesus Christ. It's why he came. Not so that you could just play church and check off the box that you attended a church service during Christmas. He came so he could bring you to eternal life, to fix everything that's been broken. And no one is denied if they will believe. No one is denied if they would seek this salvation. And our kids are doing so good right now, listening. Parents are doing great, so why not take a little extra time to give your life to Jesus before you go and celebrate? And by the way, to have Jesus in your heart, in your life, your celebration is going to be even that much greater. So would you give your life to Jesus tonight? And if that's you, would you hold a hand up saying, I believe in Jesus as my Lord and Savior. I'm seeing hands going up in the back. I'm seeing hands going all around the room. Praise the Lord. Wow. Praise God. Amen. Would you pray with me? You can repeat after me. Dear God, I come to you because you came to me first. You love me. You gave your son for me. Thank you. Forgive me of my sin. Restore our relationship. Give me a heart that will love you, live for you, and worship you. I believe and I receive the gift of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name I pray, amen, amen. Let's give God glory and praise. We thank you, God, for what you're doing tonight. We praise you, God.